Hey YouTube Brando here. Today we're gonna uh, dehydrate some tomatoes. Now we're starting out with what is it? Two, four, six, seven medium sized tomatoes. Uh, completely ripe. They're still firm, not soft at all. And that's what we're gonna start out with. I wanted to show you these last ones we did. They were really thinly cut. Uh, a little bit hard to get off the tray, so that may be an issue as well this time. But all we do with our tomatoes is uh, make tomato paste out of them and uh, sauces and stuff. So, you know, we're just going to grind it into a tomato powder so it don't have to look pretty. Uh, we don't rehydrate them for soups or anything. We try to use fresh tomatoes when we do that. But when we make our ketchup or whatever, we do, we use tomato paste to make ketchup and we use tomato paste to make our uh, barbecue sauce. So we'll use dehydrated tomatoes and we'll just grind them up into a tomato powder and make paste out of that. And this was, I want to say, five or six medium tomatoes right here fit in this jar. So these today we're going to cut a little bit thicker. We're going to do them in wedges. These were slices, about, uh, I don't know, around an eighth of an inch thick, really thin slices. We're going to make these a little bit thicker, so they may take a little bit longer, but they shouldn't take too long. And all we're going to do is we're going to go with our knife around here. We're going to take out this core, and then we're going to cut it and uh, wedge it, make tomato wedges out of it. So I'm going to get all these cut up and then we'll come back and load our trays and show you where we're at. I want to kind of try to show you guys how we're cutting these, but uh, I don't have my camera tripod, so this might be a little bit difficult to do. Uh, that's good enough. I'm just taking, cutting them in half and starting on the edge, like right here. And that's about how thick I want them. You know, quarter to a half inch somewhere in there is fine. Uh, like I said last time, they were about an eighth of an inch thick, and they were actually or eighth of an inch thin and they were actually too thin so make these a little bit thicker let me get these cut up and load it up and we'll be back all right so we have them all loaded up here we have them wedged and seven medium tomatoes filled one two three four trays once you start doing this a little bit, you know about how much you uh, need to fill up. And I actually only grabbed four trays because I knew I could fit roughly two tomatoes per tray. Uh, so after you do it for a little while, you start getting the hang of things and know about what you can fit on there. Now, had I cut these a little bit thinner, I'd have probably only got one tomato per tray, uh, which is why I wanted to go ahead and cut them a little bit thicker. I'd rather take my time to do them. Uh, now with that said, if you were going to rehydrate these tomatoes to reuse as, you know, tomato chunks in your uh, spaghetti or uh, chili or whatever, you would want to blanch these just till the skins crack, throw them in boiling water, let the skin start cracking on them, then take them out and plunge them in ice water and peel the skins off. Uh, not everybody does, but if you do that, you don't have, you know, when you rehydrate them in the food or soup or whatever, you don't have little bits of skin floating around in the top. It, it, you know, it just looks unappetizing. So when we do it uh, to keep them, to reuse them like that, we'll go ahead and take the skins off of them. But for this purpose, we're simply uh, going to make tomato powder out of them. And, you know, we don't really care about the skins. It's going to grind up just like the meat. So right now it is 8 p.m. We're going to go ahead and kick these off. We're going to rotate this bottom tray up to here every four hours. Uh, I'm assuming these will go for about 24 hours at least before they're done, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, this is a Ronco, so it's a it's a cheap dehydrator. You know, no fan. It's simply just heat rising from the bottom, and that's all you you know. It's all you get. So uh, we'll come back on our first rotation when we rotate this tray to here. 
that'll put this tray on bottom and then you keep doing that and eventually all your trays get rotated to where one of them they're they're all sitting on the bottom every four hours so we'll be back when we come up uh to do that all right so it's midnight now it's been four hours we're gonna go ahead and rotate these and i'm just gonna take off these top three trays And then take and move this top tray or this bottom tray to the very top just wanted to show you where we're at there like that one right there is significantly smaller those over there are starting to dry out well so get these rotated and we'll be back in another four hours all right so it's 4 a.m. now we're gonna go ahead and give these one more toss rotate that is you can see some of those smaller ones the thinner ones are just about done I mean hadn't been that long with them bigger ones have that one it's still a little bit wet so we're just gonna let them keep going for now take the bottom tray rotate it to the top we're gonna put them back on and we'll be back at 8 a.m. Okay, we rotated them at 8. It's now noon. It's actually about 1. We went a little past. Rotated them again, you can tell. They're just about done. Even the really thick ones are flattened out. We're going to let them go here. A little while longer, you can see this one. Isn't done. This one isn't done. This one isn't done. So there is some on there that's not done. So we're gonna go ahead and let them go just a little bit longer. It's not gonna hurt the ones that are done much. Uh, just remember, you're not gonna get a crispy product out of this. They're gonna be leathery, uh, no matter how long you do them, unless you just burn them, which uh, I think is pretty hard to do in a dehydrator. But we'll be back and show you what we have in four hours, or it'll be about three hours. All right, so it's about four o'clock now. Uh, we went ahead and consolidated all the ones that weren't done down to one tray, and pulled the ones that were. So that you know, you don't want them to get too crispy. You want them to keep that leathery texture, uh, and some of them are kind of crispy. Uh, but we just put them in a bowl. Stick them on top of the dehydrator and cover the bowl. You know, so no dust or nothing will get down in there. And it kind of keeps them <clears throat> dehydrating. Uh, it keeps heating them up a little bit. You know, it's not as hot as it is in here. But it's it, the bottom of this bowl is as hot as this is. So it, it just it keeps the heat heat level up a little bit. Keeps the moisture coming out. Whatever's left in there, there shouldn't be much left in any of that. But these beefier ones were not completely done yet, so we went ahead and just put them all on one tray. I let them go for a few more hours and uh, check them. Now, if you're doing them on one tray, just remember to, after you leave them there for four or five hours, go ahead and put an empty tray underneath them, and then put another empty tray underneath that one after four or five hours. If you're only doing one tray, you don't want to keep that one tray on the bottom the whole time, because this, this plastic will eventually melt. Uh, when I got the dehydrator, a lot of people who did reviews on it were, you know, bitching and moaning, oh, my uh, beef jerky tasted like plastic. Well, it's because they just threw it on there, left it, never rotated it for 24 hours, came back, and then, you know, bottom of the tray had melted a little bit. So, you do have to rotate these trays. Even if it's just one tray dehydrate, go ahead and stick you a empty tray underneath that and then stick you another empty tray and then you can rotate this one back down to the bottom and uh, remove the other trays and just keep doing that uh, until you're done dehydrating so we're going to let them go for a little while and if they're not done we'll stick an empty tray under there alright so we went ahead and pulled the last tray this is the ones that haven't quite finished yet they're still a little soft in places 
So we're not going to leave the dehydrator on for that many though. Uh, well, that's not good. We're not going to leave it on just for this many. Uh, we still got quite a bit out of that's seven medium tomatoes. And I figured out it's written on top. This is five medium tomatoes. So we're going to put these in a pint sized jar. I don't know if you can see that. Put an oxygen absorber on top. There's an O2 absorber up there. And uh, it'll seal them. We'll, we'll put a little bit of salt, not a lot. Just enough to kind of, that if there is any moisture in there, the salt should absorb it or, you know, take care of any kind of little bit of moisture residue that's left over. Especially since you touch them with your fingers, you're not supposed to do that. The oils from your fingers will actually leave bad spots on them if you're not careful. So we're just going to put a little bit of salt in with them. And uh, before we do that, we'll let them cool in the bowl here and let them actually get cold to the touch. Uh, let's see, it took... It's 6 o'clock now, so it took 22 hours to do these. I figured it would take 24 to 28 hours, so not too bad of a time on these, you know, seven medium tomatoes. Uh, soon we'll have some more videos coming out on this. We're going to make some homemade uh, uh, tomato paste. We're going to make some tomato sauce out of it, and then... Uh, we're going to make ketchup and barbecue sauce out of the tomato paste and show you how we do that as well. So be looking out for those videos. Thanks for watching YouTube.